Good morning, my name is Miss Jan, and today I'm very excited to bring you Family Storytime on our YouTube channel. Check out our story times all week long. Tuesdays, Babies and Books. Wednesday, Stories for Twos and Threes. Thursday, Preschool Storytime. And Friday, today, Family Storytime, all at 9.30 a.m. I would like to thank Little Brown and Company and Henry Holt for their permission to read these books. So let's get warmed up, okay? We're gonna say the hello song very quietly because we're just getting in. Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you today? Okay, now, even though we're in a library, you get to use your loud voice. Let's go. Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody, and how are you? How are you today? Good job, good job. Let's count our fingers, make sure they're all here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay, give them a little finger wave. Hello, fingers. Now we're gonna sing them a song. One little, two little, three little fingers, four little, five little, six little fingers, seven little, eight little, nine little fingers, 10 fingers on our hands. Okay, now I want you to get out your pointers and your thumbs. We're gonna turn one upside down for the itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain, and the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Good job, good listening. Okay, to uh, read a book, we need to make sure all of our alphabet friends are here. So let's see if we can say the alphabet together. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I never will forget how to say my alphabet. Good job. Okay, now I want you to pop in your good looking eyes. Screw on your good listening ears. While we read our first book, which is Sakes Alive, A Cattle Drive, by Carla with Karma Wilson and Carla Firehammer. It's Alive, A Cattle Drive. One day, the cows took farmer's keys right from his back pocket. They tippy-toed to farmer's truck and hurried to unlock it. Molly revved the engine up and rolled the windows down, and Mabel waved to Farmer as they zoomed away to town. The farmer shouted, Sakes alive! They're going on a cattle drive. They bounced along the bumpy road at quite a, a frightful speed. What's that sign say, Mabel asked. The cows, of course, can't read. I'll give you a hint, the sign said stop. So they went right through. Molly swerved to miss a car. She dodged it just in time. Mabel cried, how some folks drive should surely be a crime. The sheriff shouted, sakes alive, did I just see those cattle drive? The sheriff flipped his siren on and whipped his car around. Mabel mooed, I do declare. What is that awful sound? Molly shrugged. I couldn't say a flock of noisy geese. Meanwhile, Sheriff hollered out, pull over, stop, police. He called for backup. Sakes alive, we gotta stop this cattle drive. His deputy said, are you sure? Since when do cattle drive? Sheriff yelled, well, these ones can. They're going 85. Three police cars joined the chase. Mabel, look, said Molly. Those cars have pretty flashing lights. And Mabel said, good golly. 
The deputy cried, sakes alive, it really is a cattle drive. Mabel pointed up ahead, I do believe that's town. Molly uttered, press the brakes, help, I can't slow down. They whizzed right past the firehouse. The chief yelled, holy cow, they're headed for the mayor's place. Let's stop those cattle now. The firemen screamed, sakes alive, mayor, move, a cattle drive. He sideswiped mayor's flower bed. They barely missed his garden shed. The mayor shook his fists and said, cattle shouldn't drive. They roared through town, the sirens blared, the townsfolk gathered round and stared. A town parade, they all declared. Watch those cattle drive. Turn the key off, Mabel cried. The pickup slowed, the engine died. Molly fainted, Mabel sighed. Next time, let me drive. The truck stopped by the city jail. The crowd began to cheer. The best parade we've ever seen. Let's do this every year. The people wanted autographs, but cows, of course, can't spell. They stamped their hooves and pads of ink, and that worked out very well. The mayor muttered, sakes alive, the whole town loves this cattle drive. The farmer galloped into town. He had to ride his horse. The sheriff asked, are those cows yours? And the farmer said, of course. Come on, cows, we'd best get home. Dinner's on the table. The horse neighed, farmer, may I drive? And Molly looked at Mabel. Those cows both giggled, sakes alive. Since when have you seen horses drive? The end. Thanks for listening. Good job. Are you ready for some shaky eggs? I hope you got them. We're going to warm them up. Shake them loud. Shake them quiet. Shake them loud. Shake them quiet. One more time. Loud and quiet. And then, oh, where is it? Where is Shaker? Where is Shaker? Here I am. Here I am. Hopping on your head. Hopping on your head. Run away, run away. Where is Shaker? Where is Shaker? Here I am, here I am. Rolling on your shoulder, rolling on your shoulder. Run away, run away. Where is Shaker? Where is Shaker? Here I am, here I am. Bouncing on your belly, bouncing on your belly. Run away, run away. Where is Shaker? Where is Shaker? Here I am, here I am. Knocking on your knee, knocking on your knee. Run away, run away. Good job, take a cheer. Hey, you ready to go to Kentucky? We're going three times. Here we go, first time. We're going to Kentucky, we're going to the fair, to see the senorita with the flower in her hair. So shake it, baby, shake it, shake it if you can. Shake it like a milkshake and pour it in a can. Shake it at the bottom, shake it at the top. Shake it all around and around until we holler stop. Okay, second time. We're going to Kentucky, we're going to the fair, to see the senorita with the flower in her hair. So shake it, baby, shake it, shake it if you can. Shake it like a milkshake and pour it in a can. Shake it at the bottom, shake it at the top. Shake it all around and around until we holler, stop. Okay, third time. We're going to Kentucky, we're going to the fair, to see the senorita with the flower in her hair. So shake it, baby, shake it, shake it if you can. Shake it like a milkshake and pour it in a can. Shake it at the bottom, shake it at the top. Shake it all around and around and around and around. 
And around one big time, around until we holler, stop. Yay, good job. Okay, let's put our shakers away. And guess what? I have another book for you. This one is called Mr. Murray and Thumpkin by Karma Wilson. Once there was a furry mouse, a skitter scatter scurry mouse, a flurry about in a hurry mouse, whose name was Mr. Murray Mouse. He lived alone in an old teapot and Mr. Murray worried a lot. Are the days too short? Are the nights too cold? Is my tail too long? Are my teeth too old? He worried away each and every day. Then, next door there moved another mouse into a pretty pumpkin house, a carefree country bumpkin mouse who went by the name of Thumpkin Mouse. Thumpkin lay around all day just gnawing on a stalk of hay. He sang, diddle dee and a fiddle dee ho, I got no worries, oh no, no, no. And so, he frittered away each and every day. Now, Mr. Murray worried some more about that new mouse living next door. His home is a shambles, the structure is poor. I've never seen such confusion before. Then Mr. Murray, the neighborly sort, took over a tasty raspberry tort. My name's Mr. Murray, I've brought you a treat. Howdy, I'm Thumpkin, come in, take a seat. So the two neighbors sat for a mouse-to-mouse -mouse chat. Mr. Murray said, Thumpkin, have you ever thought this old pumpkin house is going to rot? Thumpkin just chuckled, oh, oh no, surely not. You know, Mr. Murray, you worry a lot. Mr. Murray said, no, I'm a practical mouse and a pumpkin is quite an impractical. And now I should go, my chores will not keep. I've windows to cock and a chimney to sweep. Then he muttered, good day, and set off on his way. The next afternoon, Mr. Murray stepped out. I've much that needs doing of that, there's no doubt. I'll rake and I'll mulch and I'll scour the grout. And then he saw Thumpkin just lounging about. He lay in his yard and admired his weeds. He munched and he crunched on fat pumpkin seeds. Mr. Murray, sit down. It's a fine autumn day. Mr. Murray said, oh, but there's snow on the way. A sensible mouse would move out of that house. Duncan just laughed. You sure fret and such. If I stub my toe, you'd offer a crutch. So what if my rooftop is sagging a touch? You know, Mr. Murray, you worry too much. While you fuss and fume, I'm going to bake I hanker to whip up a sweet pumpkin cake. Mr. Murray looked troubled. I have to advise that serving your house for dessert is unwise. He grumbled as Thumpkin sliced into his pumpkin. After three weeks, the in blew the first snow. Mr. Murray cried, Thumpkin, your roof looks so low. I just love, said Thumpkin, a good storm, you know. Relax, Mr. Murray, you do worry so. But Thumpkin's poor house continued to sag, and still Mr. Murray continued to nag. Perhaps we could save it. We'll shore up the side. We'll shingle the roof. Do something, he cried. Then a creak and a crash and a deafening smash. and all Mr. Murray's worries came true. The two neighbors watched as that roof fell right through. Mr. Murray cried, now what on earth shall you do? Thumpkin said, fly back and take in the view. I've always been keen on a breath of fresh air. The breeze is refreshing and ruffles my hair. I got half a house, I ain't needing more. Mr. Murray said, yes, but what's left is all floor. Ah, oh, Mr. Murray, said Thumpkin, don't worry. That night, all alone in his cozy teapot, poor Mr. Murray, he worried a lot. He wrinkled his brow and paced while he thought. Will Thumpkin freeze solid? Oh, how could he not? Out in that snow, he'll chill through and through. Hold on a minute, I know what I'll do. So he bundled up warmly and scurried next door. 
My teapot, dear Thumbkin, has room for one more. Thumbkin said, R -r really? It is a mite ch ch chilly. And so the two friends settled in for the night. They made up their beds and they snuggled down tight. Mr. Murray said, Thumbkin, I'm worried all right. I've food for just one. What a horrible plight. Ah, Mr. Murray, said Thumbkin, don't fear. We got half my pumpkin. We'll eat it all year. And then look, <gasps> the next year there were a lot more pumpkins for the two to, to share. And so Mr. Murray, who worried too much, and Thumbkin, who worried too little, lived out their days in a cozy teapot and met somewhere right in the middle. Thank you for listening. Okay, so our craft for today is to make a little sheep. And I made this out of the parts of the newspaper, you know, where, that you usually put in the recycling bin. Well, it's very handy for things like this. So I have newspaper that's going this way and that's going this way to add a little contrast. And uh, so you cut out the fluffy sheep and then four legs and a head. Uh, they have little ears, you might put some uh, fur up on top, you don't have to. You can put a little face on it and uh, you can have your own flock of sheep if you'd like. So I hope you try it out. Let me know if you do and I'll see you in, see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.